and welcome to this series of case studies and experiments using PicoScope. That's uh, PicoScope software and also NBH as well. So that's in the Pico diagnostic software. Um, it, it really follows cases that I, I feel no other tool would have got us out of trouble, would have helped us diagnose conclusively what the, what the problem was. In some cases, you don't end up with a diagnosis. You know exactly the depth of repair required and to actually repair is beyond economical repair. Nevertheless, you've got that evidence that, that stops those awful incidents happening where it's an awkward discussion or it just becomes a scrap vehicle. In most cases, or it can be that that is the case. Okay, here was another challenging one, another ABS. This is Mini Cooper. Uh, left hand front wheel speed signal error uh, and I've put a note there beware of AC coupling okay so this is a MRE wheel speed sensor uh, on the left hand image scope view one we've got um, the near side front which is the magenta waveform and we've also got um, the black waveform which is a uh, math channel of channel C C uh, divided by, that should be C multiplied by 10, or C divided by, oh no, C divided by 10, that's right, to get it, I'll explain why that is in a moment. What's important here is the offset between these two. Now, this vehicle had already had a wheel speed sensor to the left-hand front, and the, um, the error was, was there all the time. If you put your scan tool up and asked to show uh, four wheel speeds, you could spin the left-hand front wheel and it would just read zero kilometers per hour. So a new sensor was fitted and still the same. So why is that? Well, let's look at the known good, which is the black waveform, and look at the amperage. It moves from five milliamp up to about 12 milliamp. And I've put what I'm expecting is a theoretical crossing point of six milliamp. Now, the crossing point is how the ECU determines the frequency of the road wheel, uh, rotation of the wheel assembly. And if we do not go past this or through the crossing point, it could never calculate frequency. So now look at where six milliamp is on the magenta on the right hand side. We never actually pass through six milliamp. Now, I don't know what the crossing point is on the computer, but there's clearly something not right. And why I say be aware of AC coupling is if we had AC coupled these signals, we would have removed the DC offset and they would have looked exactly the same. We wouldn't have spotted this fault. So yeah, AC coupling is great. It is there. Uh, it removes the DC offset when required, but I would go with DC and then catch it raw and then you can always AC couple later or return recapture. The cure for this was a, an original equipment, OE, genuine wheel speed sensor. Straight away it worked and unfortunately, because it was another garage, uh, they were keen to get rid of the vehicle. I never got a chance to revisit, but what I do know is a genuine sensor cured this problem. So I mentioned there uh, a math channel, didn't I? Uh, a C divided by 10. Why is that? Well, these ABS wheel speed sensors um, typically switch between 6 milliamp and 15 milliamp. Uh, and it is difficult using a, a standard sort of low amp clamp to get down to that kind of resolution. But there is a hack that you can use, a trick if you want to call it that, and that's something called a coil multiplier. So you see on the image left, sorry, on the image left we have um, a pictogram of the uh, rear wheel speed sensor, a signal wire and the ABS control unit. And what we've done, we've interrupted that wire with a breakout lead, but actually wrapped it through 10 turns. So what happens there is we get multiplication of the current coming from the ABS wheel speed sensor. Uh, so six milliamp now becomes 60 milliamp and 15 milliamp becomes 150. That raises that current such as that we can pick that out of the noise floor and with some filtering, we can get some quite good results with a clamp that was never really designed to be down as low as that in terms of current. 
So it's a win-win really. Um, there's an image there on the right of the times 10 multiplier, what it does look like, and a pictogram there on the left. And which is why um, I had to then use the math channel C divided by 10 because the value that we had was actually multi multiplied by 10. So dividing by 10 returns us to what should be the current output. Okay, that's it. Um, thank you for watching and any questions, please send them over and um, yeah, we'll endeavor to answer them as ever. All right, take care.